Welcome everyone to the Light of Zion. The Light of Zion is a God's written words. And the Light of Zion will continue to shine its light to guide and to lead the chosen ones of Israel until we arrive back to Zion, our homeland. Here is the promised land. The light of Zion will continue to shine its light for the travelers of Israel who are sojourners among the nations. Shine your light, O Yahuwah. Let it lead us to your holy mountain. Shine your light, for your word is true. Shine your light, for your word is good for me. And with that, I say again, welcome to the light of Zion. Thank you for joining me for another presentation by the light of Zion. Today I'm coming with, to you with another uh, question for us to break down and this is titled how long will our God hide his face from Israel how long will a God hide his face from us Israel is it going to be forever how long will he hide his face from us so join me as we break down this presentation. The good question is this, why is Yahuwah a God hiding his face from us? <clears throat> why is he hiding his face from us, the people that he has chosen to serve him? Why is he hiding his face? Well, follow along. It was foretold that because of all the errors of Israel, that Yahuwah will reject and hide his face from Israel because of our error. But the question is why? Pay attention to what is written. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 15 to 17 there it is written so when Jeshurun grew fat he kicked out rebelliously so you have grown fat you have become stout and you have become bloated so he forsook God who made him and he despised the rock for, of his salvation. So they incited him to fury with foreign gods. So there we are offending him with detestable things. So there we are sacrificing to demons and not to God, to gods that they had not known, even new ones that came along recently. Say to gods that your forefathers did not know. Say you forgot the rock who fathered you, and you did not remember the God who gave birth to you. So because of this error, Yahuwah left Israel, the people that he chose to serve him, because of our error of our leaving our God to go and serve the gods of the other nations, of false gods, even new ones, new gods that just came up. So therefore we forgot, our ancestors forgot the God that did what? That fathered us and gave us life as a nation, as a people. We left him to go and to serve these fallen gods. That's why Yahuwah is hiding his face 
from Israel. Yes, so we forgot the, the God, we forsook the God who made us, and despite the rock of our salvation, He is the one that protected Israel, delivered Israel out of Egypt, established the people of Israel as a nation, gave them the promised land to inherit. But Israel left Yahuwah to go and seek and serve foreign false gods. So even new ones that just came along, that is why Yahuwah is hiding his face from the people he has chosen to serve him in his promised land. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 19 to 21, there is written concerning the reason why he is hiding his face. He said, when Yahuwah saw it, he rejected them because his sons and his daughters offended him. So he said, I will hide my face from them and I will see what will become of them. For they are a power generation, sons in whom there is no faithfulness. So they have made, they have incited me to fury with what is not a God. So they have offended me with their worthless idols. So I will incite them to jealousy with what is not a people. And I will offend them with a foolish nation. Yes, because of what Israel did, Jehovah said he's going to take action. He's going to hide his face from them and see what will become of us as a people because of our error of leaving our God to go and serve what is not a God. Because of this, he said he's going to do what? Provoke us to jealousy. It worries not a people. That is why Yahuwah is hiding his face from us, Israel. If we know why, he can help us to do what? To correct our ways and return to our God. So what is the result of Yahuwah hiding his face from us? In the book of Hosea chapter 5 verse 15, chapter 5 verse 14 and 15, there is written, For I will become like a young lion to Ephraim, and like a strong lion to the house of Judah. I myself will tear to pieces and go away. I will carry them off, and no one will rescue them, and no one will rescue them. I will go away and return to my place until they bear the consequences of their guilt, and then they will seek my favor. When they are in distress, they will seek me. So because of our error, Yahuwah said he's going to become like a lion to Ephraim and a strong lion to the house of Judah. So he's going to chase both houses, the house of Ephraim and the house of Judah, because the nation of Israel broke into two, northern and southern kingdom. So Yahuwah said he's going to become like a lion chasing uh, Ephraim and Judah away because of our error. And he's going to go away until Israel can bear the consequences of our guilt. That is the result of our leaving our God to go and serve other gods. So Yahuwah said he's going to return back to his place in heaven. 
he's going to hide his face from us until we have finished bearing consequences of, the, uh, of this error of our ancestors. So yes, Israel will be abandoned by our God and we will be without his protection and his spirit and the spirit of our God. And all the descendants of Israel will bear the punishment and the humiliation for our ancestors' error. In the book of Hosea, chapter 3, verse 4 to 5, there it is written, It is because for a long time the people of Israel will dwell without a king, without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without a pillar, and without an effort and teraphim statue. Afterwards, the people of Israel will come back and look for Yahuwah their God and for David their king, and they will come trembling to Yahuwah and to his goodness in the final part of the days. So because of this error, Yahuwah said that the people of Israel will dwell without a king, no leader to lead us and truly guide us or shepherd us together as a people. Rather, we will be a scattered people with no leader guiding us or leading us. Israel will be without a prince or princes to rule over us. Israel will be without a sacrifice. You, Israel, will not obtain mercy because of our error. We have to bear the punishment, the consequences of our error for a while, for a long time. So Israel will be without an F, without a pillar. Or without a homeland, the pillar is a home. Uh, a home. Israel will be without a homeland, and Israel will be without an effort that is a means for ascertaining, or without the effort is what the holy the priests use to ascertain the will of the decision of Yahuwah concerning the people. So Yahuwah will remove his Holy Spirit from his people of Israel. And Israel will be without what? A teraphim statue, that is a God image. That's why we are serving the gods in the images of other people, not in our own image. For a long time Israel will be serving the gods made in the image of other people of the nations and not an in our own image. So this is the result of Yahuwah hiding his face from the people that he chose to serve him in the promised land. This is the result of our error, the error of our ancestors. That's why Israel today is scattered among the nations bearing the consequences of this punishment I mean of this era until it ends. For it is written that after afterwards, after the punishment is over, the people of Israel will return to seek Yahuwah our God and to and for David our King, and we will come trembling to Yahuwah our God and to his goodness in the final part of the days. So Israel is still bearing this punishment until it's over. But it's time we have been we have started to wake up as a people as to who we are. And it's time for us to start seeking for Yahuwah our God and to start seeking for our leader the one that God will raise up in the in the lineage of, of David, which is his son Yahushua, to one to rule over the house 
and gather all Israel together. These things will take place in this final part of the days of our punishment. So how long will our God hide his face from us? How long will our God hide his face from us? In the book of Psalms chapter 13 verse 1 to 3 there it is written, How long, O Yahuwah, will you have forget, forget me? Is it forever? Say, how long will you hide your face from me? Say, how long will Will, it, will I have anxious concerns, concern, which are grief in my heart each day? Say, how long will my enemy triumph over me? Say, look upon me and answer me, O Yahuwah my God. Give light to my eyes so that I may not fall asleep in death. So David is asking Yahuwah, how long will Israel be abandoned? Is it going to be forever? How long will he turn his, hide his face from us? He wants to know, he says, so that he does not fall asleep in death. How long will our enemies triumph over us? Is it going to be forever? The scripture we read before, Hosea said that for a long time the people of Israel would dwell without a king, without a homeland, without a prince, and so on and so forth. But how long will it be? Are we going to bear these consequences for our error? How long will he hide his face from us? In the book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 46, there is written, How long, O Yahuwah, will you hide yourself? Will it be forever? Will your rage continue to burn like a fire? Yes, he's asking again, how long will Yahuwah hide his face from his people, his chosen race, his chosen people to serve him in his promised land? Is it going to be forever? So will your, will your rage or your anger continue to burn like a fire? So yes, how long are we to be under his rage? How long are we to be humiliated and at the mercy of our enemies? How long is his punishment on us? Will it be forever? Let's find out how long the book of Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 to 2, there is written, Come and let us return to Yahuwah, for he has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day, he will raise us up, and we will live before him. So the, through the prophet Hosea, Yehovah reveals how long we are to be in punishment. So he struck us, but he will bind our wounds. So after two days, he will revive us after two days of punishing us. After two days of hiding his face from us. He will revive us. On the third day, we will live before He will raise us up and we will live before Him. So, yes, for two days, Yahuwah will hide His face from the people 
that he has chosen to serve him. But after two days, he will raise us up. But the question is, is it just literal two days that he will hide his face from us? Notice what is written in the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. That who has said, What should I do with you, Ephraim? And what should I do with you, Judah? For your loyal love is like the morning clouds like the dew that quickly vanishes. That is why I will cut them down by means of the prophets. I will kill them with the swords of my mouth, and the judgment on you will shine as a light. So yes, Jehovah said that concerning these two nations, that belong to him, the people of him, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, the southern kingdom that is Ephraim and Judah. Say, so what will I do with you? Your loyal love is like the morning clouds that quickly vanishes. Israel did not remain loyal to Yahuwah, our God. But we left Yahuwah to serve other gods. That's why it says our loyal love is like the morning dew, the quick cloud that quickly vanishes. We left our God to go and, and be serving the gods of the other nations. And that's why he said he's going to cut us down by means of the prophets. So I will kill them with the sword of my mouth. And the judgment on you will shine as the light. Yes, the judgment or the punishment of God on us is in us shining as a light to show us, yes, we don't need to do this next time. Is that judgment upon the people of Israel not shining as a light? Because all the things the prophets have written have they not, have not all come true? Starting with the things Moses wrote and told Israel that this will happen to you when you leave your who are your God to go and serve these false gods. Have they not all happened to us? Look at all the causes of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 68. Have they not all happened to us? Look at all the slave, slave, slavery of Israel. Is it not what the prophets wrote? Like he said, I will kill them by the war, by I will cut them down by means of the prophets. All the things written according to the prophets have they not all take, happened to the people of Israel, to the chosen race. So is this judgment on us, is it of our God on us, is it not shining as a light for all to see? Again, in the book of Second Peter, chapter three, verse eight, Apostle Peter reminded us of how long we are to be in this punishment. Even though Hosea said it's going to be for two days, Peter wrote this and said, "However, do not let this escape your notice, beloved ones, that one day is with Yahuwah as a thousand years, and a thousand years." As one day. So even though it is a two day punishment, but it's really a two thousand years punishment. Now Yehovah said he's going to put upon the chosen his chosen people.
So the punishment is this. In the book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 38 to 46, there it is written, But you yourself have cast us, has cast off and rejected him. You have become furious with your anointed one. So you have spawned the covenant with your servants. So you have profaned his crown by throwing it to the ground. So you have broken down all the stone, stone walls. So you have reduced his fortification to ruins. All who pass by have pillaged him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. You have made his adversaries victorious. You have caused all, the, all his enemies to rejoice. You have also driven back his sword, and you have made him lose ground in the battle. You have brought an end to his splendor and, and hauled his throne to the ground. So you have cut short the days of his youth. You have clotted him with shame. Salah. So how long, O Yahuwah, will you hide yourself? Will it be forever? Will your red continue to burn like a fire? So yes, the punishment is that Yahuwah will do what? Cast off and reject Israel, his anointed one, his chosen one, special prop, his chosen people. So you, he has he he has spawned the covenant with your servant, the covenant he made with Israel, because Israel rejected that covenant. So Yahuwah abandoned the covenant and brought punishment upon the people of Israel. So even he has cast their crown to the ground. Israel was to was made, was to be the leader of the nations, but Yahuwah has thrown Israel down to a slavery position. Yahuwah has brought made Israel become instead of becoming uh, Israel became a reproach to their neighbors. Well, Yahuwah's promise that is through the descendant of Abraham that they will bring blessings to the rest of the families of the earth. Or well, rather, Israel now is a reproach to their neighbors. All the families of the earth are laughing, have, have made Israel has become a laughing stock. Even Israel's sword is now um, withheld because Israel cannot fight their enemies. We cannot fight our enemies without the spirit of our God and without the backing of our God. So Israel has fell to our enemies because we rejected our God and chose to serve other gods. Yes, all Israel will cease to exist as a nation. <clears throat> Israel's crown and glory will be thrown down to the ground. The city walls will be torn down. Israel will be powerless against all their enemies that will come against us. And that's exactly what has happened. And that's why the prophets wrote that the judgment on us will shine as a light. We became very powerless towards our enemy, against our enemies, because we rejected our God. So all this punishment has come upon the people of Israel and has happened to the people of Israel. And it's shining as a light for us today who are waking up to see. 
the judgment of our God on us because of abandoning him to go and serve other gods. The punishment and the humiliation. In the book of Amos chapter 9 verse 1 is written, I saw Yahuwah stationed above the altar and he said, Strike the head of the pillar and the threshold would shake. So I cut them off at the head and I will kill the last one of them with a sword. So no one who flees we get away, and no one trying to escape will succeed. Yes, God said as soon as the head of the pillar is cut off, which is the chief cornerstone, which is Yahushua, the Son of God, as soon as he is cut off or put to death, all this punishment will come upon the people of Israel said he's going to cut Israel off from the head and no one fleeing from this judgment will get away. So he's going to kill every everyone who flees with no one will let try, trying to escape will succeed. No one can hide from this judgment. Only the repentant, repentant ones will escape, but all the unrepentant sinners of Israel will be put to death because of this judgment. Only those who turn around and return to seek Yahuwah their God are the ones that will escape. But the rest who refuse to turn around from serving the gods of other nations, they will all be put to death. Yes, this punishment will start with the death of the Messiah, the chief cornerstone, that our God has chosen to lead us, Israel, and uh, to be our king. So since the death of the Messiah, whom the world called Jesus, this punishment has followed the people of Israel. And they will continue until all the sinners of Israel, unrepentant sinners of Israel, are annihilated. Book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 1 and 2, that is written, Now as Yahushua was departing from the temple, his disciple approached to show him the building of the temple. In response, he said to them, Do you see all these things? Truly I say to you, by no means will a stone be left here upon a stone and will not be thrown down. Yes, Israel's cities, city walls and temples were thrown down in the year AD 66 to AD 70 by the invading Roman armies. For they destroyed the city of Jerusalem and the city of Israel. And Israel was left with no home or no pillar, just as it was foretold. That is the punishment and the humiliation that Yahuwah brought upon the chosen people, the chosen race that he chose that he, that, that he chose to serve him. So, so yes, Yahuwah is hiding his face from the people of Israel and he is hiding his face for until 2,000 years have passed. And during this time, Israel, we are bearing punishment for our error until it ends. And that 2,000 years is coming to its conclusion. And as was foretold, in the final part of the days, the people of Israel will do what? 
all return around to seek Yahuwah their God. And for David, that is Yahushua, our king, to lead us and to gather us back to where we belong, to the promised land, to the kingdom of our God. So yes, it's time to wake up. It's time to start seeking for Yahuwah. It's time to start seeking to be among those that will be gathered back to return back to the promised land to serve our God. For every unrepent every unrepentant one of Israel will die by the sword as is written. Until I come to you next time, remain blessed and keep seeking for Yahuwah your God and for his mercy and that you be chosen among those that will return back to the promised land. Thank you.